Hey everyone, welcome, welcome. My name is Charlie, and today I'm going to be fixing up Barley Farm a little bit, answering some of your questions, and then giving a tour of my 100% perfection farm. My 400 days video was technically the last day on the farm, but I spent so much time trying to earn money for the golden clock that I kind of just let my farm fall apart, really, and I never really put the time into making it look nice. So for today, I'm just going to start off by doing some decorating and fixing up the farm while I answer questions and talk. If you just want to see the complete tour at the end and you aren't interested in watching me work on it, then you can skip to the timestamp on the screen right now. Okay, so the first question is from Paul Eilitzer who asked where I come from, and I'm from the United States, the Eastern US more specifically, but I'm currently living in Canada. Also, Feifei Tube and Piper had asked what my age is, and I'm 21 right now and turning 22 in just a couple months, so that's really scary. <laughs> All right, so the next questions are from Brad, who had asked, what are your future plans for the channel, being as visionary as possible, and would I ever expand content into streaming? So my future plans for the channel, I, I've actually been really excited about the channel lately, and I've come up with a lot of cool video ideas that I'm excited to work on and excited for you to see. I'll be doing more Stardew, and I'm probably going to do a more regular Stardew Expanded series, as well as an 100 days series for a community center perfection run. I also have a really good idea for a challenge video, but I'm trash at coding, so if you know how to code, please actually send me an email. I'm willing to pay money, and I'm pretty sure it would be super easy to make. I'm just, I've never done coding before, I don't know. I'll also be continuing to play Hollow Knight and posting some more Minecraft challenge stuff, and I've also been thinking I would really like to do a hardcore series in Minecraft because that would be a ton of fun. There are also some other games I want to play too, like Terraria, Breath of the Wild, Animal Crossing, stuff like that, but I've just been so busy lately and I probably won't be able to get to those for a little bit. In terms of being visionary, I would say that my most like out there plans for the channel will be to actually eventually start streaming, which ties into the second question. I have been thinking in my brain, my head, my good old noggin, that I'd want to start streaming when I've gotten a bit more subscribers. I don't have a specific number in mind or anything, I'm just a big perfectionist and I get really anxious about doing new things and especially about doing them poorly. <laughs> So I'd want to start doing that when I know at least like 10 people would come and also when I have figured out how to organize the stream and where I want to do it, all the gross little logistical things. But essentially, yes, in the future, I'll definitely start streaming. The next question is from Blabbity Bloop, which I genuinely love that name. I think it's so great. Oh yeah, I added a picture of my cat onto the post asking for questions because I, I love my cat. I think he's adorable. I don't know. So that's where the pretty kitty comes in, and pretty kitty is indeed epic. And then also, is this channel your first ever YouTube channel? If you've had any others, what did you post? So yeah, this is actually my first YouTube channel ever. My 100 Days Stardew video was the first video I've ever posted anywhere, and things have pretty much just taken off from there. So yeah, pretty unexpected, but I'm really grateful for it. Rafferty had asked if there's a story behind my Katara avatar, and I'm not really sure that there is. I mean, a while back, probably in like 2017 or 2018, I started getting back into Minecraft, but I didn't want to be a boring Steve, you know? So I looked online for a better skin and I found this like Korra Katara kind of one. I love Avatar so much and I'm definitely a waterbender, so I decided to use that as my skin. And originally I actually wanted to make primarily Minecraft content on the channel, so I kind of based my profile picture and everything around like that one Minecraft skin design, and then ended up pivoting into Stardew Valley, so... <laughs> I still like it though, I think it kind of looks like me, and I still post Minecraft stuff, so it works. On the topic of Minecraft, Mushimush and Miss Red Supremacy had asked if I'm gonna make more Minecraft videos, and if I consider doing any more Minecraft mod challenges, and the answer is definitely yes. I really love playing Minecraft and making Minecraft videos, but I feel like the market for Minecraft content is just, like, so saturated that I want to make sure I have a good idea before I actually start working on a video. Like, I really personally love the rats video because, like, <laughs> who else on YouTube has created a rat army, built a castle out of cheese, and traveled to Ratlantis? Like, no one, you know? I'm working on another Minecraft video right now that I'm really excited for, and it isn't modded, but it will be lots of fun. It's really cool to see that some people's favorite videos of mine are the Minecraft challenges because I personally have so much fun with those and I really, really love making them. All right, next, Argon Matrix had left a really amazing message saying congrats on 10,000 subscribers, which thank you so much. I'm so grateful for all of you guys and all your love and support and 
I've said it before, I never expected anybody but my parents to watch these videos, so the fact that thousands and thousands of people have and continue to do so at this very second just like blows my mind. Anyway, so they're curious also as to whether I'm in school, what I'm studying, and what my aspirations are career-wise. I have a single semester of college left before I can get my undergrad degree, but COVID was pretty bad for me, as for everyone else of course, so I decided to take a bit of a break before finishing to just work and save up money. I'll probably be finishing college back in the US, I'm just <laughs> not sure when. In terms of my field, I'm in honors biology and pursuing a minor in interdisciplinary studies. Personally, I really enjoy ecology and botany, so I think if I were to start a career in biology, I'd do something along those lines. I'm not really sure what will happen career-wise in the future. I never expected to go anywhere with YouTube stuff, but I want to keep making content, so I'll probably just see where the wind takes me, honestly. Also, Argon Matrix as well as Tico and a bunch of other people were asking questions about my cat. So, his name is Clifford, but I call him Keef, usually. I'm pretty sure he's a mackerel tabby, and he's a little over a year old. I adopted him actually in November of last year, but his birthday is in July. Tico also asked if I have any other pets, and I, th I think the answer is no. Like, my family has pets, but I consider those family animals, you know? Like, Clifford is my cat, and he's the only pet that I have and see, like, every day. Raphael had asked the same thing, but also asked if I'll make a Discord server, and yes. I've already technically made one, I just have no clue how to use Discord, so I've been slowly trying to make it not garbage and make sure all the permissions are correct and everything. I'll most likely be officially announcing it in the next video, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Oh, there's just a guy chilling here. Oh! Thank you, sir. I have no idea what to do with this, but now I have it. The next one is from It's Cyber, who asked how I got into playing and watching Stardew Valley. P.S. I love your vids and commentary. Oh my goodness. Thank you. I really appreciate that. This is gonna sound really random, but I actually started playing Stardew Valley in, I think, 2018 or 2019 because I watched Call Me Kevin playing it. I just remember watching him do some mining or something, and I was like, wow, that game looks fun. I've been playing the Harvest Moon games my whole life, my favorite is definitely Magical Melody, but yeah, I agree with Eric that there were a lot of things I felt were missing from Harvest Moon and a lot of opportunities for improving the game mechanics, and I think Stardew does a really good job of expanding on the farming genre of games. In terms of watching Stardew, I honestly don't really watch Stardew Valley videos. Very rarely I will, but I just feel like I play so much Stardew that when I'm done, I don't want to watch someone else play more Stardew. Maybe it's just me, I don't know. I mostly watch Minecraft and Hollow Knight stuff, or like, movie theory things. I think that's really cool. Whoa, that's a lot of slime, holy cow. This is so satisfying. Wait, I just had an idea, hold on. I'ma take this. Oh my god, this is so cursed. Why is it gigantic? I hate it. So probably the last question for today, Cheez-Its had asked what my favorite song is, which seems like a simple question, but actually is very much not for me. I've always been a very musical person, I was really involved with chorus and theater and band and everything for like a decade and everyone else in my life has always been into music, so my music taste is pretty all over the place and I don't think I have one favorite song. I've been listening to Talking In Your Sleep by Dream DNVR, Dream Denver, I'm not sure. I think it's a really good rainy fall vibe and I tend to like his stuff. Ego by Dazer May is dope. Love Won't You Stay by John Robert. Anything and Everything by John Robert. I'm a huge fan. A plus. 10 out of 10. Criminal by Grey. I love this song. The percussion makes my percussionist brain happy, and I just love the genre mixing. I don't know. I honestly don't operate on a song level. I operate on more of a playlist level. I have like a chill playlist, a crying playlist, a like lo-fi playlist, winter playlist. So basically this is just a handful of my fall songs. It would be fun to share some of my playlists with you guys if you'd ever be interested in that. I don't really know. I just like music. If I didn't answer your question in this video, do not worry, I'm gonna do a Stardew Valley Expanded series and I'll answer a couple questions at the end of every one of those videos as well, cause it's gonna be a lot more chill. I really appreciate you all leaving questions though, and I promise I'll get to them. Also, Daniel, I see you. Here are some more pictures of Clifford. Alright, now I think I've done everything I wanted with my farm, so let's go into the complete tour. 
All right, so we're gonna start this tour off in my house and it's not that different, but I have added some rugs and we got Uga here. I've added some banners as well, like little monster banners, just to give some detail. The kids room hasn't really changed at all. I kind of liked it just the way it was with the mushrooms and stuff. It looks really cute. We got this painting here still just to terrify my children into behaving. Then we've got Lewis's shorts in the kitchen uh, just, just because. Just a nice little decoration, I don't know. And no, I'm never giving them back. Then if we move to the basement, we've got all the casks down here, which I usually used it for cheese because the wine just took a little bit too long. So yeah, generally just cheese down here. Okay, oog, rude. This is the living room area, and this right here is the lamp that my children frequently try to burn themselves on. I don't know why. I, yep, it just is. Right here we have the legendary fish relatives, and this is the legendary sashimi. It used to be the Crimson Fish Jr., but, uh, yeah, we ran into some problems. The actual legendary fish are, first of all, all accounted for, but they're all in this fish tank up here, and we've also got some sea urchins in there with their little cowboy hats. All of them sourced from skull caverns, because that's the only thing I ever got from the treasure rooms. So yeah, and then moving back into the living room area, we've also got this little table down here with the tea set that Alex gave me. And then we also have Krobus's little room, which is, it's um, definitely something special. I just ignore this part of the house usually. But yeah, that's pretty much the entire house. So we can move outside to the farm now. At the top here with the shipping bin and everything, nothing's really changed. It's all pretty much the same. And then we've got these little statues right here. And these are from my first 100 days video. We have Humtaguf, Pinky Lemon, and Farogmon. I really like this spot. I like that they're all pensively just looking at this vase. I also think that the way they're kind of nestled in the trees looks really nice. And it's a good way to enter the farm, you know, just terrify people right off the bat. We also have this little rare crow shrine because that was another goal for my 100 days video. So this is just all the rare crows and I put little signs with stuff that kind of reminded me of them. I don't know, I just, I just wanted it to look nice, you know? Then if we move up here, we've got our chicken coop and we have some pretty interesting stuff in here. Oh, they're not being fed, oh my God. Yeah, I, yeah, it's been a bit. And wait, what is that? Go what? Golden egg? Wait, what? How, wait, how? Wait, do chickens just lay that? How did that happen? Okay, well, I'm just gonna hatch that and move on with the tour. I don't know what's going on right now. I, did, I didn't even know you could do that. Okay. So yeah, we got my little chicken enclosure here. And then this right here is a little shrine. It's got Lewis's original underpants on it. Like I'm wearing the trimmed lucky purple shorts, but these are just the, the straight up purple shorts. So it's very sentimental to me, definitely. We've also got this vase of flowers, recycling machine, a pearl on a sign. It's, it's all pretty random, <laughs> I don't know why. Then we have both of our crystallariums here producing diamonds and just a row of mayonnaise makers because I have a lot of eggs. Then we can move to this part, which is Nala's enclosure. And I, yeah, I don't really know why this exists or why it looks this way, but yeah, I just thought it was too funny to take off. Here, here's a view of the front, also of the side, just so you can really take in how actually disgusting and terrifying this is. Moving over here, we have this nice little tree trail that leads to the right, so I can easily access the top part of there, and hello Miso. And this path also leads into the fruit cave. Oh my god, I have obviously not been in here in a hot second. Then you can move to the left here, and we've got the greenhouse, and it's filled entirely with ancient fruit. I added some more trees to the greenhouse because I thought it would look really nice if the trees were surrounding the ancient fruit, but they didn't grow in time, so you'll just have to imagine what it would look like. Then moving over here, we've got our tree farm, and I love this tree farm so much. I think it's so cool that you can just get maple syrup or resin, whatever you need, and it's just always going. It's very convenient. We've also got grandpa's shrine up here, hidden behind the tree farm because 
I am a disrespectful grandchild. Below the tree farm, we have some beehives just to produce honey. I originally made this to make farm totems, but then I realized there are many other efficient ways of producing farm totems and <laughs> that this is a waste of time and materials. I do have some tulips planted here as well. I think it looks nice and it also increases the price of the honey. They just haven't grown yet. So yes, this is the honey area. And if we move to the right over here, we have our squirrel shrine. Obtaining this squirrel was another one of my goals that I'd made in a previous video, and we've got the blue cowboy hats on there, iconic, and yeah, I just thought it was a nice little, like, nature-y area of the farm, like, a good place to just, you know, take a- take a- take a seat, and yeah, I don't know. Then we have our storage shed. We've got these gourmands just keeping guard out front. At the bottom, we've got some furnaces, and then the chests are pretty well organized, but also pretty empty right now because I sold everything I own. But we've got a chest for seeds, dishes, some like special items like the, the strange capsule and like golden pumpkins and stuff. And then one for crops. Then on the right side here, we have chests for mob drops, ores and minerals, warp totems, and extra weapons and armor and stuff. This row down here is for fruit, mushrooms, forageable items, and artisan goods. And then over here is just like furniture, random stuff, wood, and stone. So it's all pretty well organized and easy to access and everything, and this actually saved me a lot of time during my playthrough, I think, and I was pretty happy with this. Below the storage shed, we have this little mushroom path, which leads to the obelisks. So all our obelisks are here, and they're really easy to access, and I, I put them over here because I feel like obelisks are pretty intrusive because they're so tall, and right here, they kind of still make a statement, but they're also not in the way. So then we got our fish ponds. We've got a sturgeon pond for making caviar and then a blobfish pond right here. I'm just collecting all the row and... Oh yeah, I wanted to show you this. It's a rotten plant. I picked it up on my farm. I don't really know what it is. I've never seen it before, but it reminds me of that orc from Lord of the Rings. On this side, we have another blobfish pond and also a lava eel pond. And then there's just preserve jars all the way down the road just to make it a little easier to make the processed items. Then below the fish pond, we have our suck it abigail area with signs scattered about with eggs and hats and stuff to make abigail feel bad. This was a little garden area that I built after winning the egg hunt for the first time. So I, I personally really like this area. Then if you follow this path over to the right, it brings you to the slime hutch. And this is just a little chest that I use to store the slime eggs and all the product that I get from inside. And holy cow, that is so much slime. I wanted to breed a white slime when I first got the hutch. So I put in the tiger slimes and the green slimes and I ended up getting some pale slimes, but I'm not 100% sure that any of them were white. I did slaughter them at one point and a diamond fell, but I'm not sure if that was because I killed a tiger slime because I think those can drop diamonds as well. So yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not really sure if that was a success or a complete bust, but I did like just getting these little slime things. They're very satisfying. Over here, we have our obsidian crobus statue, which is something that I fished up as one of the goals. And I think it's really nice. It's just my husband and he just stands here and it's, it's nice. This area is for the barn and we've got all sorts of animals in here. We have like pigs and ostriches and goats, I think. Also cows, of course. I don't think we have any sheep though. I didn't really have any need for wool, so no sheep. But yeah, we've got this little enclosure here and then we have a row of cheese makers and also some oil makers just for truffle oil because that sells for a lot of money. And then moving down from the barn, we have the golden clock area. I added some benches here because I thought it would be kind of nice for little nights like this when the lights are on and it's just pretty vibey down here. You could also just sit on the bench and contemplate the passage of time. I, I don't really know. I just thought it looked nice. That's really what it boils down to. <laughs> I think this is probably my favorite part of the farm, especially at night, just because it feels so good to have gotten the golden clock and essentially to have made the money to buy it in like 100 days. That's pretty nuts. So yeah, that's pretty much the entire farm. So now all we have to go through is the quarry and also Ginger Island. Okay, so as many of you know, this is what was formerly called Jam City. In my first couple videos of the 100 day series, I started just loading this place with preserve jars, so... I thought the Jam City would be a fitting name for it. I did blow it up at one point though, and it broke my spirit so much that I decided to replace the jars with kegs. And this was pretty much one of the most instrumental parts of getting the 10 million dollars for my last video to get the clock because ancient fruit wine sells for so much money. It's kind of insane. 
But yeah, this is kind of one of my favorite places in this world. I just love harvesting the wine and harvesting the jam, putting everything in. You know, there's really not much to say about this place. It's just kegs in the quarry. I don't, it's just sentimental to me. And so that's why I include it. So last but not least, we have our ginger island farm. And I took out all the ancient fruit and put the path back. I think it looks really nice. And of course we have these little signs up here with our chi fruit. I also moved Master Ugwe up here just cause he was a little bit in the Master Ugwe. <laughs> So moving on to the interior of the house, I like to imagine that this is like my family vacation home. So up here we have a little bit of a reading room. You can sit in the chair, sit on the couch and just read a book, hang out with the family, play- Oh my- What the heck was that? Okay, that room is cursed. We're gonna come down to the dining room and we've got this little table. I put a poppy seed muffin that Krobus lovingly prepared for me. We also have a little china cabinet because we're bougie and a little map on the wall. Then over here we have the bedroom and we've got some bookshelves and then beds for all of us. The big bed up here is for Krobus and I and then the little beds are for Oog and Uga, of course. Now moving outside, I've added a bunch of sunflowers to the place because I think they're really, really pretty. We also have our seed makers over here, which were helpful in setting everything up. And I think this is just a good place for them because it's where I do most of my crop growing. I also tried to make massive crops, but none of them worked. So now we just have three by three patches of pumpkins and melons and stuff. So that's just the way it is. Then down here we have the pride and joy of my ginger island farm. So basically I wanted to grow one of every like fruit and vegetable from each season. So over here we have our spring crops and then just some chests to store like extra seeds and stuff. Then we got our summer crops right here, melons, blueberries, everything like that. Then we have our fall crops. And then over here are kind of like the miscellaneous crops. We have some from every season, like star fruit, red cabbage, just kind of stuff that I don't really use and that didn't fit in the other plots. So yeah, this isn't all the crops entirely. We're missing a couple of them, like green beans and stuff, but I'm really proud of how this turned out and I love the way it looks. I think it's really convenient and it's really pretty. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We have the sunflowers wrapping all the way around the island, which I thought was kind of a nice touch and a little secret passageway up here. So yeah, that's basically it. That's my 100% perfection farm and I'm really proud of it. I felt like this was the most fitting way to say goodbye because I left it in kind of a state of disarray last time and I really like being able to see the farms like as I wanted them to be. This was pretty much my vision for Ginger Island the whole time. I just never really had the time to put into decorating it and everything. So seeing it this way just makes me pretty happy. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching and I'm glad I got to answer some of your questions as well. If you did enjoy the video, feel free to leave a like or subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you here. I'm really excited about some of the stuff I'm working on right now and I think you guys are really gonna like it. So thank you again, you guys are awesome and I'll see you next time. Bye!